Minicamp. Uh, Minicamp is... Um, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, no. 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 I don't want to do it. Like, if, if I had a choice to be there, um, no, I wouldn't want to go. But... Me being a good teammate and being uh, being a true professional, I will be there because it's it's in my contract, right? I want even though we don't have to be there, I'm gonna be there because uh, I want to hold my teammates accountable. And if I can't hold myself accountable, how can I hold my teammates accountable? And so I never miss a mini cap, regardless I, on how bad I didn't want to go. I'm always uh, I, I'm always intrigued. I'm glad that you were forthright about it. Not that you aren't forthright no. in other uh, situations, but. Uh, I always got the impression that that when I was out at minicamp, and I went out a couple times, I always got the impression that A, they didn't want to be there, and B, they most certainly did not want me there. That was always my impression. We don't actually you know. You know, when I play, I didn't mind the media there. Yeah. If I'm gonna be here, let's get some pub out of here somehow. If I gotta <laughs> be here, let the people see we put it in work. Let, let, let them see. You know, because it's not we're not losing because we're not putting in the work. We're putting in the work now. And so, and I'm, a, I'm always a firm believer, just get there. Once you get there, you'll do the work. And so I never went there with the go through the motion mentality. If I'm here, I'm not about to waste my time. I'm not about to waste something I can't get back. So if I'm here, I'm going to get better. And so, can, you, can you play that video again, Art? I, just, I, I want to point out one thing. Um, watch, watch Rod Wood. Rod Wood is very early. And I'm going to ask you to pause if that's possible, Art. Okay, it's not possible? It is possible. Or it is possible. Okay. Now watch. Stop. Do you know what is amazing about that picture? Whoa. I want you to look at that picture. Mm. They're all smiling. They're all smiling. Because you know what you saw the last, the last few years here under this regime? Art, right, put the camera on me for a second. This is what you saw. <clears throat> and then somebody would come up and go, hey coach, how are you? And then all of a sudden, Rod Wood, who just a second ago was smiling, he's standing like this. They were all grouped. I hope people got... I seriously... That, like, everybody... They all turned into Despicable Me. They're all like this. Like, everybody was so... Like, it was like... It was unhappy. You know, and the temperature went, has went from here to here in the facility. I wish they could bring it here. Especially on days like this, when you know what is new, you know where, and you know somebody, fear some you know who. So we can't say you know who name, or you know what show. Isn't that right, Art? It, what I'm I'm in the middle of training, <laughs> Sawyer. I'm working super hard. Is Sawyer doing the second half? No, I'm doing the whole thing today. <clears throat> what? Uh, I mean, I mean, all right, that's good. Um. <laughs> But Lions training camp for me, or, or mini camp, the mandatory mini camp, we, are, we have to be there, right? But as a veteran, after you've been in the league for, say, four or five years, it gets old. It's very tiresome. You, you really want to be somewhere else. But for your team, for your teammates, being a good teammate, you're going to go, um, especially for the young guys, because at the end of the day, you want to win. And so the more guys we have, um, on the board uh, with the right mindset, the better uh, the better chances we have of winning the championship. And so that was my reasoning for going to minicamp and uh, being consistent with it throughout my years of being in the NFL. Uh, Sean, so my question is, and you throw it back at me, when you guys go to, the, go to these minicamps and you guys are watching us practice, you guys watching us do the drills, like what are you guys re trying to report just on what you see? Because honestly, you... I mean, you're gonna see a few probably one on ones, but it's For not me. Nothing. Like, like, like I like I, honestly, I'm not full disclosure. You shot straight, I shot straight. Yeah. It's a waste of time for me. Like the beat writers have a job to do. The the, the like the beat writers have a job to yeah. do, and they're gonna find something to write about. Maybe they're gonna have a conversation, or maybe they'll do. Like here, I'll give you an example. The um, if I was there, do you know what I would say? I would say. Exactly what you just said. Boy, the temperature of the room sure seems. Yeah. It was 110 degrees last year, and it seems to be about a, a nice 68 degrees in the room now. But, like, in terms of things that I see, I don't see it. Like, camp, I told you 
No, you weren't here that day. It was Monday. I told you the story. Um, Kenny Galladay's first year. Kenny Galladay's first year. No, it was I a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. He lit everybody up. Like it was, it was, it was, and it was weird because it was a hot Sunday afternoon. So, Joyke, you know how some practices there's maybe 10 media people there. Some there's maybe 15. And some there are like four or five. It was one of those afternoons where there are only four or five of us there. And um, I, I was actually sitting with a guy that's going to come on the show next week, uh, my buddy Kyle Mikey. And we literally watched Kenny Galladay eat guy after guy up. Like, it was, it was fascinating to watch. It was just like, he's just eating guys up. And finally, one of the coaches yells out, ain't nobody cover this rookie? Like, look, this kid's, like, it was like, next, ate him up. Next, ate him up. Next. Ate, and when I say everybody, yeah. I mean everybody. Slate too. Including a Pro Bowl corner. He just, he had a day, right? And then the thing that blew my mind, and I think I told you this before, he puts on this show, right? And so you're thinking to yourself, oh, okay, the kid's going to go back to the locker room and feel good about himself, right? As soon as practice ends, you know what he did? Walked right over to Matt Stafford. I wasn't privy to the conversation. Had a conversation for a second. Matt shook his head. They went right back out to the practice field and continued to throw routes and work on timing for the next half hour. And I, like, I saved, like, it was funny. I brought this out a couple years back. You know how memories comes up, like, on Facebook? And I go, hey, listen, I'm wrong a lot, but this is one thing I was right about. And like I had said, I'm not writing this kid into the Hall of Fame but this kid's good. I mean, he is. I'm telling you right now, he's he's good. And you know, there's certain things you see like that that, no, that puts he, another you, you player. Knew it, you knew it. Like, and 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 again, what jump? Yeah. So to me, that's the story. That, the story. That's the story. And that's why he has that big contract. This this is what it is. Right? So, what you saw him doing after the practice is stand up to 30, bring it in on me. I want players and who are playing any sport or doing anything um, in the athletic field. Uh, and just to kind of go back on what Sean said, how he stayed 30 minutes after practice with, with a pro bowl, a pro bowler quarterback, and he wanted to go over pass routes and go over timing and understand that doing something like that, as small as that for 20, 30 minutes after practice, day in, day out, you're separating yourself from the competition. It might not seem like that much, but day after day after day after day, that's what you're doing, all right? And so what people don't understand, you do that consistently for, say, for a year, right? For a year. When the next season comes around, you get another opportunity another opportunity to go on the field or go on the court or the baseball diamond or on the hockey rink. You'll see how much you progress over time, and you'll see how much you're stepping away from the competition. And that's one thing I really harped on um, in high school. Um, I heard that from a high school coach. He said, if you quit one time, you'll quit again. And every time you quit, it'll get easier. And so uh, once I got into the league, I hear a quote from um, Coach Caldwell, and he would say something similar to uh, something similar to um, what my high school coach said. He would say, no matter how tough the situation is, know that you're tougher. And I said, oh, okay, now I see the correlation. And so uh, just take that into consideration. When you guys are training, you guys are out there in the hot weather, just know that you're training for a purpose and don't stop until you reach your end goal. Is that great? Now, Art, now that he brought that up, could you bring our training videos back up and maybe Joy could grade our training videos and tell well, us what I we was need gonna, to work I on? I was going to actually, and Joy gets a lot of shine on this show. I was going to actually give some of the shine to Corey because Corey talked to Dan Campbell. Would you like to do that or the training videos? It's up to you. What do you uh, want to do? We, yeah. We, we can't, I mean, it's all. One of the same. We're all going to, I mean, it's the same topic, so. Okay. Well, here is Corey talking to uh, Lions head coach Dan Campbell on what do Staley I just brings. want you to understand that this is the Belize and the Bell show. Oh, well, go ahead. Play okay. the video. Hey, Dan. How's it going this morning? Real good. Hey, Corey, was we were sports. So, I, yesterday I observed Deuce Staley out there being really vocal, especially with the running backs, just really on him and demanding and demanding. I know it's really early on right now, but can you just talk about how instrumental Deuce has been to what you guys are I'm trying to implement. Yeah, I, I mean, Deuce is, there's a reason why I wanted him here. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's, look, there's a lot to it. And it's like I, I said before, he's, he is, man, he's high energy. He's done it. He's got, uh, uh, he's an excellent fundamental coach. Uh, 
when you're talking about technique and all those things, but he also, he does a great job in the pers perspective of the running back when it comes to your reads, you know, uh, carrying the football, uh, as it pertains to protection, man, he's outstanding with those things, working with the offensive line, telling those backs, man, this is, this, these are the calls. This is where it's going. Understand you got to start here. You're working left to right, right to left, knowing where the mic point is, blah, blah, blah. And so he's, and then on top of that, man, he brings juice to the practice. I mean, we talked about energy, but he really gets it going. And, uh, you know, if you don't bring some type of energy as coaches and players, really, uh, you know, you hope that they begin to feed themselves, but if not, it's our job as coaches to feed the wolf. And, uh, so, or I guess I should say feed the lion, if you will, um, you know, then you're just going to have another day. You'll just be out there going through the motions. So there's always got to be some type of competitive uh, spirit uh, energy that's been uh, injected into the, the practice from somebody. And Deuce does an outstanding job of that because the defense hates him. So that's already a step in the right direction.